Iraq's Prime Minister says his country no longer requires American combat troops to fight the Islamic State group, but a formal time frame for their redeployment will depend on the outcome of talks with U.S. officials. This week, Mustafa al kahini said Iraq will still ask for U.S. training and military intelligence gathering. His comments came in an exclusive interview of a planned trip to Washington, where he is slated to meet with President Joe Biden on Monday for a fourth round of strategic talks. There is no need for any foreign combat forces on Iraqi soil, said al kahini falling short of announcing a deadline for a U.S. troop departure. Iraq security forces and army are capable of defending the country without U.S.-led coalition troops, he said. BUT al kahini said any withdrawal schedule would be based on the needs of Iraqi forces, who have shown themselves capable in the last year of conducting independent anti-Is missions. The war against is, and the readiness of our forces requires a special timetable, and this depends on the negotiations that we will conduct in Washington, he said. US and Iraq agreed in April that the US transition to a train and advise mission meant the US combat role would end, but they didn't settle on a timetable for completing that transition. In Monday's meeting at the White House, the two leaders are expected to specify a timeline, possibly by the end of this year. Th US troop presence has stood at about 2,500 since late last year, when former President Donald Trump ordered a reduction from 3,000. The U.S. mission of training and advising Iraqi forces has its most recent origins in former President Barack Obama's decision in 2014 to send troops back to Iraq. The move was made in response to the Islamic State group's takeover of large portions of western and northern Iraq and the collapse of Iraqi security forces that appeared to threaten Baghdad. Obama had fully withdrawn U.S. forces from Iraq in 2011, eight years after the U.S. invasion. What we want from the U.S. presence in Iraq is to support our forces in training and developing their efficiency and capabilities, and in security cooperation al kahini said. Th in Washington trip comes as the Premier's administration has faced one setback after another, seriously undermining public confidence. Ongoing missile attacks by militia groups have underscored the limits of the state to prevent them, and a series of devastating hospital fires amid soaring coronavirus cases have left dozens dead. Meanwhile, early federal elections, in line with a promise al kahini made when he assumed office, are less than three months away. Chief on the agenda in Washington, however, is the future of American-led coalition forces in Iraq. Iraq declared victory over as in late 2017 after a ruinous and bloody war. The continued presence of American troops has become a polarizing issue among Iraq's political class since the U.S.-directed drone strike that killed powerful Iranian General Qasem Soleimani and Iraqi militia commander al-Hamadi al muhandis on Iraqi soil last year. Well, with rather widespread instability following the targeted killings, the U.S. and Iraq have held at least three rounds of strategic talk centering on Iraq's military and ongoing fight against is, and to formalize a timeline for withdrawal. Four years since their territorial defeat, his militants are still able to launch attacks in the capital and roam the country's rugged northern region. Last week, a suicide bomber killed 30 people in a busy Baghdad marketplace. That attack was later claimed by his dot al kahini has faced significant pressure from the U.S. Shiite political parties to announce a timeline for U.S. troop withdrawal. Ongoing rocket and, more recently, drone attacks targeting the American military presence have also heaped pressure on the government. They are widely believed to be perpetrated by Iran-aligned Iraqi militia groups. An announcement that combat troops will withdraw might serve to placate Shiite parties, but will have little impact on the ground. The coalition's combat mission ended effectively in November, when the Pentagon reduced U.S. troops in the country to 2,500, according to Foreign Minister Fuad Hussein. 
Shiite parties have said they do not object to trainers or advisors who may remain as part of the coalition. U.S. and coalition officials have maintained that U.S. troops are no longer accompanying Iraqi forces on ground missions, and that coalition assistance is limited to intelligence gathering and surveillance, and the deployment of advanced military technologies. Iraqi military officials have stressed they still need this support going forward. Iraq has a set of American weapons that need maintenance and training. We will ask the American side to continue to support our forces and develop our capabilities, Al Qaeda said. Al Qaeda assumed power as a consensus candidate following months of political jockeying between rival parliamentary blocs. The blocs were firebrand cleric Muqtada al sadr's coalition on one side, and paramilitary commander and former minister Hadi al-Amari's Fatah group on the other. The stakes were high. al qadhimis predecessor had resigned facing pressure from historic mass anti-government protests. At least 600 people were killed as Iraqi forces used lib ammunition and tear gas to disperse crowds. al qadhimi presented himself as a champion of protester demands and set a lofty agenda. He promised to hold early elections, now scheduled for October 10, and to bring to account the killers of activists, including whoever killed prominent commentator Hisham al Hashimi outside his home last summer. The arrest of an Interior Ministry employee and the shooting death of al Hashimi fell short, many said, because it did not reveal which group ordered the killing. Critics say al Qaeda has not gone far enough. This is partly because the very conditions that facilitated his rise to the premiership have also served as his chief limitation in parliament. Political opposition watered down ambitious economic reforms that targeted Iraq's bloated public sector when the country faced a disastrous financial crisis after falling oil prices. Without a party backing him in parliament and with rival parties vying to control ministries and other state institutions, Al-Qadhimi's government has appeared weak.